course, we're always looking for that little bit of magic, I think, in the painting when things really start to come together. And that's an absolutely thrilling feeling. week workshop and I'm very excited about this. I absolutely love painting and I'm really excited to share my absolute love of painting with you. I'll be going over still life compositions like you see here, the grapefruit cupcake. We're doing something very similar, um, looking at translucency of a citrus fruit like grapefruit, lemons, oranges, and a cup of tea or a cupcake. So uh, once we do that, we'll then go and look at a pair of shoes, a slightly more irregular object and apply those principles that we learn to an interior, such as laundry room or a bathroom. So you'll be painting as well, and each time we cover a new concept, we'll go home and practice painting something very similar that you have, and then come back next week and we'll take a look at that together. And there's drawing, then there is color mixing, and there's thinner layers or the layers that I want to appear beneath and then there's the mid application and upper application that's how I think of the painting now I don't always paint in that way but when in doubt when tackling a new subject I kind of like to remember what my process is um all right so I'm looking through my viewfinder this is my viewfinder I have it set to an 8 by 10 very handy and I'm just seeing now where things are going to end up now the corner of the cloth here is a little bit out. It's gonna be cut off a bit. I'm probably gonna play around with that a little bit, kind of maybe stretch it a bit because I, I will likely want it in the canvas a bit more than it probably is because I just absolutely love this napkin. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm looking through the, um, I'm looking through the viewfinder right now, but I actually don't need to. So we just kind of want to establish, and you can, you can also sort of see, um, my grapefruit, even though I was showing you the motion, actually is fairly in line. Okay, so I'm such, um, holding up the viewfinder and I'm just going to paint now. Okay, so all right, one of the things here that I would actually really emphasize is the focal point. Now, all right, I'm going to stop talking for a second and just think. So the focal point here. Focal point, oh, it's such a complicated thing, isn't it? The focal point, it's not the subject of your painting. Don't, the subject of your painting should probably be in the focal point. So it's kind of a contradiction, isn't it? But it's going to be where the eye is drawn. Or I should say there are areas in the painting where the eye will want to go. And therefore, you should be aware where the eye is naturally going to be drawn to in relation to what you're talking about. So imagine that you're telling a story to someone and you have a punchline. Don't put the punchline, you know, to, don't obfuscate the punchline in the middle of the story because that's not gonna make any sense. It's kind of the same thing here. You know, a punchline or the point of your story can be wherever you want it to be. No one's gonna stop you, but there are probably times when people are listening a little bit more closely. And I think it's sort of the same thing here. Some things that I like, like constructing a joke, right? It's all like, um, there's a whole like method, right? To like constructing jokes. And I think it's like the same thing. So your viewer is going to be drawn to certain things more than others. I'm going to be talking about my color palette, of course. Um, I use a split primer with a few secondary colors. All right, so I'm mixing the blue cloth. It's uh, kind of, I don't see, it's kind of a very neutral, sometimes more greenish blue, I think, this cloth, but it really changes in the light. So this is white with ultramarine blue. Uh, then I'm going to show you, this is my Caribbean turquoise, I believe we established not Phthalo Green Lake, which is sometimes what I would use instead. Um, obviously, the phthalos are just fantastic colors, great tinters, very strong, um, very high chroma. Whenever we need to preserve chroma in a blue. Uh, the phthalos are a great option. Okay, so I just want to see here. So that's sort of the... 
going to be in turquoise there. Now, for this pile here, what I like to do for mixing this cloth, I always cut these two. But when I really want to hit the right color on a bright side of lemon or an orange, I need to know what the limitations are. I need to know that if I have three colors in that mixture, especially if they're any that's complementary, that that is not going to work for the lightest side of a lemon that's directly facing the light, of course. Um, and so we'll look at how white neutralizes our warm colors. Uh, I tend to hold the paintbrush like so at this stage. So there's those spots of color here, which were really nice. So I'm just going to lay it a few more. And don't get me wrong, this is a detail. This is not um, critical for modeling. Now, I, I see a little bit of this red, but from the grapefruit, but not a lot, but I really like when um, colors, I love when artists do that too, when they just share color across objects. So whenever I can, you know, push that a bit, that uh, is great. Okay, so I wanna start with my darkest. The first thing I wanna start with is anything um, that doesn't have white in it. You can tell, I'm always like, no white. White, white is fine, but uh, I'm going to start with any thinner, dark color that does not have white. And I just, what I'm doing right now, you don't see me painting, is I'm just adjusting the mixture. Now I have this beautiful red underpainting. I'm going to say myself right now, I like that. I don't want to cover all that up. I said, I'm all no whites, just darks. And now I'm going to say, okay, whites, but starting from uh, the highest chroma colors first, because I won't be able to get those back once I start you know, getting mad, unless I go wash my brush maybe, which I have no intention of doing. So uh, I said, I really love all these colors here in uh, the napkin and that I would paint this largely as if it were a wall. So I'd do that. Uh, I'm just gonna get in my like darker lines here first. And I don't, and I said I don't want to have a big edge here. Don't want people to be concentrating too much going out of the painting. Um, I then moved to thinner layers, darks, and high chroma, applied thinly so that I can drag the heavier, lighter uh, colors on top of it. And with that will come some examples of the brushwork that I use. Uh, I use bristle brush and synthetic brushes at different stages in the process. Time for the fun part. This is the moment of truth. There are two ways you can roll this. I can create a sharp edge and roll it back, or I can start here and roll it forward. So put a little bit of that paint down. I'm like, okay, could get could get even lighter. So that's good. I give myself lots of room to really hit that edge. So that's the edge there, right? wonderful when we not only capture uh, the likeness of the thing in front of us, but see ourselves in the painting. So I think I'm going to really focus on how to uh, capture that love and that magic of painting.